Donald Trump and his administration were criticized quite a bit by us for using nepotism to staff the White House, you know, giving his daughter a job, his son in law, like they were all up in there. And that's that's largely what they consider government jobs to be for. It's not a place where you get the best people so you can get the best results. It's just a way to pay off your friends and buddies. Um, but what about the Biden administration? Is there some nepotism there too? Well, apparently there is, according to reporting the Washington Post. In the first few months of Biden's presidency, at least five children of his top aides have secured coveted jobs in the new administration. They include two sons and a daughter of the White House counselor, the daughter of a deputy White House chief of staff, and the daughter of the director of presidential personnel. Former director of the Office of Government Ethics, Walter Schaub says, while it may not be as bad as appointing your son or daughter to a top government post as Trump did with Jared Navanka, it's still bad. Not as bad as Trump cannot be the new standard. So let's give you some examples of what this looks like. Bearing in mind that initially Biden came out the gate swinging, like I'm gonna do some ethics stuff and it's all gonna be cool. On his first day in office, he signed an executive order implementing ethics rules that in key ways went further than the Obama administration's policies. But nothing actually stopped the hiring of people who are related to White House officials. So um, earlier this week, the Treasury Department announced the hiring of JJ Reschetti, a 2020 college graduate whose father is one of Biden's most trusted West Wing aides. Rashetti is assuming a junior level position as special assistant in the Office of Legislative Affairs. Steve Rashetti's daughter, Sharon Rashetti, is deputy associate director of the Office of the White House Social Secretary, a job she secured after working at the Aspen Institute and on the Biden transition team. Bruce Reed, a deputy White House chief of staff and longtime Biden confidant, has a daughter, Julia Reed, who works as Biden's day scheduler. And some of the more experienced sons and daughters of White House officials hold higher level jobs. There's, there's, there's more, we can get into the specifics, but. Jordan, what's your reaction so far? I, I think Schaub's uh, comment sums it up perfectly. Sure, it's not as bad as Biden, like you know, appointing Hunter to be like a special envoy somewhere, or like a diplomat, or yeah. taking him on on trips. Effectively, it's very weird, but effectively, like Ivanka was like the first lady because she was like so closely attached to him on some of these at some of these important meetings and sitting next to him. If he had Hunter doing that, I think that would be kind of the one to one comparison. But this is still pretty bad. Um, because it clearly is not on merit when you have someone's three of somebody's kids <laughs> in top posts in the White House. <laughs> that's not by accident. That's not you know just a random blind application. Uh, and I also think about how they purged staff who, at some point in their life, yes, smoked weed. Uh, and then that is like after saying like, look, we're gonna you know reform these policies. We're gonna catch up to like kind of where modern society is. We're not gonna punish you for doing this. And then as people were honest and forthcoming, as they you know got security clearance or got jobs, retroactively were then uh, punished for it. So it's just like, yep. you know, it's still it's still it's still we have a long way to go before we clean up uh, government. But it's a, it's a sign of you know just the same yeah. status quo. Uh, just it's a big club. And we're not in it, so this is how they enrich themselves. I'm glad that you reminded us of the weed thing. It, it also made me remember the the guy in the press office that had been like harassing reporters, and they they were so defensive. <laughs> that guy, they wanted to keep him. Like, if only he'd smoked weed, they could have yeeted him out of the White House. But he only harassed a female journalist. So, anyway, um, yeah, you're right. And and look, I, I agree that that statement is is totally true. It isn't. As bad for a couple different reasons. Um, one is that the positions aren't necessarily as senior, and there does seem to be, in some cases, an actual consideration for qualifications. So, um, the press secretary, uh, Jen Saki, uh, she has a relative that has a job, but is also trained in that field, which is a little bit different than like Jared Kushner being in charge of the literal Middle East peace process. When I honestly don't know if he has training for literally anything. I don't know what he does when it comes to real estate. Trump doesn't seem to do anything. Why do we assume that Jared Kushner knows literally anything about floor joists? I don't know, but he was in charge of, that was just one of his things. He put a couple hours a week in the Middle East peace process. But that said, be better, build back better for government. Build bureaucracy back better by not hiring your your uh, your family members. It is a problem, as you point out with Rochetti, when your nepotism is only limited by the fact that you ran out of kids. That's not supposed to be the limit on your nepotism. So be better. And I know, like some people be like, well, why should you be discriminated against just because you have a family member that's in government? Because I don't, you just should, because it looks really bad and I want to set a better precedent. Not necessarily because I expect 
that the next Republican administration that like President Carlson is gonna abide by it. But I do care about ethics and I want a government that does too. Any other thoughts, Jordan? I mean, I on Jared Kushner running the Middle East peace process, I haven't been keeping up with the news. Is everything good there? Um, oh I, yeah, no, it's totally no, cool. It's good. Everything, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. He solved the Israel-Palestine conflict, good, all right, great. That's what no, happened. they made um, trusted they, confidant. They, they just opened an ice skating rink. It's uh, half in the West Bank, half not, and people just mix and it's great. It's great, <laughs> he not- nailed it. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Cast or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.